Well, there's no question. We're seeing a lot of inflation these days. The food supply has been impacted by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We've also, of course, dealing with high gas prices, high diesel, a lot of talk about perhaps electricity prices going up as well. So with me to talk a little bit more about nuclear energy and how it fits into the entire energy mix is Seth Gray. Uh, he's on the board of the Nuclear Energy Institute, as well as a member of the Civil Nuclear Trade Advisory Committee and a CEO of a national NASDAQ listed company, Lightbridge, uh, which is a nuclear-based uh, company as well. So Seth, thank you for coming and explaining nuclear, because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding about nuclear energy. Would you agree? Well, thank you, Jane. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. And yes, there is a lot of misunderstanding. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how I, I mentioned the, how it fits into the energy mix. We've got crude oil and you know jet fuel and electricity and natural gas. I mean, where does nuclear fit into all that? Well, nuclear produces just about 20% of the electricity in the United States, and it's available 24-7, so it sort of fills in when other sources aren't available, and it emits nothing into the air, no carbon dioxide, and you know it helps uh, prevent us and allies from relying on fossil fuels from countries that aren't friendly to us. Yeah. Well, I think that's interesting because it is the cleanest fuel or one of the cleanest forms of energy, correct? Correct, yes. So I, I think people just kind of, I don't know if they think of Chernobyl or, or what, there's still this kind of concern or worry about nobody wants it in their area. Why do you think those feelings still linger? Well, you know, it varies in different countries. There are some places where there really isn't opposition to nuclear. And, you know, when you look at the accidents that have happened in nuclear, they they got tremendous press, tremendous coverage. People were very scared. And, you know, the industry and regulators have responded with new technologies, new approaches, making it much safer. And I, I think people are coming around more to the newer technologies, the newer approaches. And we've seen a lot of countries that never had nuclear power, like the United Arab Emirates, choose to get it with very strong public support, actually. And that, that's very interesting, you know, that you, you don't have as much the, the lingering effects against it if things can be done with new technologies, with, with new approaches, and very safely. Yeah. Well, you mentioned other countries. So France is a big user of nuclear energy, correct? So, um, and they have had success with it? Yeah, France is about 72% nuclear by electricity production and actually electrifies a lot of things more than other countries do in transportation and in many areas. So France has been very successful. And frankly, had France not been so nuclear, Europe would be in much worse shape relating to Russia today because Germany imports so much in terms of fossil fuel from mm -hmm. Russia that Germany and some neighboring countries pay about a billion dollars a day to Russia to buy fossil fuels. And had France not built as much nuclear as it did, mm -hmm. I don't think you'd see as united a Europe, as strong a stance in support of Ukraine if there were that much more reliance on Russia or the ability of Russia to just turn off the energy. Yeah. That's very interesting because there are geopolitical implications, as we well know, with energy as well. And you mentioned there's no dependence on foreign fossil fuels with nuclear. So how, I mean, give me kind of a, a super easy science lesson. How is it created? How is nuclear energy created? <laughs> well, uranium is in the ground. Yeah. It, it's, it's an element. It's a metal. And uranium is produced into fuel rods where neutrons in the process called fission create heat and that boils water in most reactors of traditional designs. And then the steam spins a turbine and a generator makes electricity. What have been some of the steps that have been uh, taken in recent decades to make sure that nuclear plants are safe? Well, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and other bodies around the world always have regulators on the sites of the reactors. They're, they're not regulating from afar. Okay. And their regulations have become much stricter, much more intrusive. 
the utilities that operate the reactors themselves often have even more strict standards. Okay. And then just explain stuff finally. I mean, where do we stand as a country in terms of governments? Like what, from your point of view, what would need to happen to have nuclear power more plentiful in the U.S.? Well, I'd like to see the U.S. government do two things in addition to a lot of good steps it's taking right now. One is we need more facilities in the United States to process uranium, like we were just talking about a minute ago, uh, something called a chemical conversion process to put it in a form that can be enriched and then facilities that enrich it so it's producing more energy when used in a reactor. And secondly, test facilities for new technologies where China and Russia have really raced ahead in these areas. And we need facilities and test reactors that can demonstrate the new technology so American innovation can be demonstrated here and not have to go outside the country. Okay, well, that is very fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing that. And and I feel like nuclear has has a role in this as we figure out the future of energy. So thank you, Seth, for joining me. Thank you, Jane.